Germans received a very specific warning that Ahmed Jibril's right-hand man, Hafez Hussein Dal Khamoni, and a known bomb maker, Marwan Krisa, were heading for Germany. Following these contacts between uh, Jibril and the Iranians, a clandestine PFLPGC cell was set up in Neuss, Germany, and their massive bomb maker, one who had developed a lot of improvised explosive devices for Jibril in the past, was also sent to Germany to work on on uh, assembling such devices. One of the targets uh, investigators determined in the aftermath of that group's uh, arrest uh, was going to be an American aircraft. The BKA, the German criminal police, mounted a surveillance operation in Frankfurt and in October 1988, Operation Autumn Leaves arrested 17 people. They found massive amounts of weaponry, explosives, timing devices, and most significantly in the car that was being driven by Dal Kimoni, in which Grisat was a passenger, a Toshiba Bomb Beat radio cassette recorder with a primed bomb inside it, designed to blow up aircraft. Il a beaucoup tout le temps il est à Tehran. Il va et vient. Alors vous savez qu'il était aussi, il est aussi un membre de service secret syrien. Il est un officier de de ce service secret syrien. C'est l'Iran qui a exigé la réalisation de ce attentat et c'est Ahmad Jabril qui l'a réalisé. Euh, ayant toute collaboration, toutes les possibilités mises à sa disposition par les ambassades euh, concernées. Marwan Krisa and Hafiz Dol Khamenei on October 26, 1988, after a shopping spree buying electronic components. The buying bins filmed by German secret police are in this phone booth on Hafenstrasse, where they are arrested. Earlier, the BKA had been listening to the international line as Krisat from another phone had told Damascus, I have made some changes in the medicine. It is better and stronger. When taken to BKA headquarters, Krisat insists he be allowed to make a phone call. He does. He is released soon afterwards and flies to Jordan. I had spoken to a reporter, a German reporter who refuses to go on camera, uh, but who is very close to uh, uh, federal, in, uh, uh, federal uh, intelligence sources here in Germany, who assured me that uh, Kresat was uh, an agent of the Jordanian service and an asset of the Central Intelligence Agency. If you take Chris Ash, for example, who um, was a bomb maker, who served Jibril and other terrorist networks for years, he was also reporting for years his activities to um, Israel, Jordan, some other countries' intelligence department. The Germans did not believe that they had sufficient evidence directly linking him uh, at the time uh, so that was an internal judicial decision within the, the German government. Uh, he obviously uh, continued to be a suspect for us and for the uh, British authorities, as well as for the German authorities, the BKA. Uh, I personally spoke to the president of the BKA, Dr. Boga, and he assured me uh, that they were going to continue an all-out effort to identify everyone involved with this uh, Jibril group inside of Germany. There are times that to keep an agent who has been groomed uh, for so many years and so much effort has been put, and even if he brings you the type of information that clearly indicates that there's a bomb going to go on board or there's a bomb going to be go off some in, in, in a public place, you must sometime let it go. Pressure had come from uh, uh, Bonn, from the uh, U.S. Embassy in Bonn, to release Krisa. Blackman Jabril is reported to have said that the uh, the parametric detonator bombs were to be used on attacks on Israeli bases at the top of mountains. I don't know of any Israeli bases over 10,000 feet, 
and the triggers were all programmed to become active at over 10,000 feet of altitude. So they could only have been meant to attack planes. This device can be used in a number of different ways. True, it is used to make explosions in high places, but it is possible to put this device in a car at sea level, and if this car is driven to the top of a mountain, an explosion will take place. Now, this mechanism is not only related to aeroplanes. Experts are well aware of the fact that this device could be used for many purposes. In April 1989, four months after the destruction of Pan Am Clipper made of the seas, Six months after the October arrests of Kresat and Dalkomeni, the German police raid 16 Isserstrasse in Neuss, Hassan Abbasis. That raid will lead to the discovery of three other Kresat manufactured bombs concealed in electronic devices. In cold storage at a veggie stand owned by Abbasi. A fourth bomb is never found, and there are rumors of a fifth. These bombs are so sophisticated, the top German bomb expert is killed trying to disarm one. The German government will never request the extradition of Marwan Kresat. The Scottish police will never be allowed to talk to Kresat, nor will the Scottish police ever be told the details of what Kresat told the FBI, Supervisory Agent Tom Furman, Special Agent Edward Marshman, when the FBI talked to him on November 12th and 13th, 1989. A journalist secretly interviews the bomb maker. To him, Kresat confirms that he had made airplane bombs for Jabril, had been sent to Germany on a revenge mission, and that he was a secret agent. So as the aircraft that was blown apart is put back together, rivets inspected, how a jumbo jet tank demonstrated by a toy model, terrorists and bombs have already been found. Terrorists have been set free. A bomb has vanished. The finger points somewhere, Syria and Iran. That somewhere soon becomes nowhere. March 1989. Paul Channon, the British Minister of Transport, in a London club, tells five journalists that the Pan Am case has been solved. Arrests are imminent. Banner headlines in the tabloids. The next day, named as the source, the minister denies he ever talked and soon afterwards resigns. Then American columnist Jack Anderson reports in his column on a conversation between Margaret Thatcher and George Bush. Who should they blame? I read the Anderson column. I find it a little hard to believe that two heads of state would make a unilateral decision such as he reports exonerating governments who are uh, documented state sponsors of terrorism of having anything to do with the Pan Am 103 event, especially given the intelligence information, uh, some of which I know has been corroborated, which clearly links the bombing to them. One Sunday, David Leppard, Sunday Times ace investigator, even announces he and the Times have solved the case, a story that changes when Mr. Leppard writes a Lockerbie book. In the middle of 1989, some six or seven months after um, Pan Am 103 blew up, when Secretary of State Baker was in Damascus, that Baker had a meeting with the Syrian Foreign Minister. At that meeting, Baker said, what are you doing about the GLC group? And the Foreign Minister didn't quite understand. He stripped and said, who are you talking about? He said, the Jibril group. He said, well, what, what about them? He said, they're responsible for Lockerbie. What are you doing about them? He said, well, how do you know they're responsible? He said, we have the evidence, and the evidence is irrefutable. Now, that was seven months after 270 people were murdered in Scotland. I want to know why that irrefutable evidence has never been made public. I also want to know how it's now changed dramatically to suddenly be put at Tripoli's door rather than Damascus's door. The C-130 